Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Again, random in both frequency and type. I was making my regular visit to Weird Stuff Warehouse. Uh, it's a recycling center in, in the uh, Sunnyvale area. And they mostly take in e-waste from companies that uh, don't have a way of processing it. And they, I think they pay them by the pounds. So they actually, these companies can make money by you know returning the stuff. And also there's like tax write-offs. And when they're not doing that, they also attend uh, some they attend auctions of companies that go bankrupt in the in the Bay Area, which which happens often enough. Uh, so you get some you get a weird mix of like uh, new modern stuff and really old, super outdated things that a, a larger company, you know, like Hewlett Packard or somebody might have had in a in a back lab that they've decommissioned. They don't know what else to do with it, and so they they offload it on these folks. Or that division shuts down and they end up auctioning the stuff off. Now, don't don't think of, when you think of these guys auctioning, it's it's. It's not that they're sitting there going like, oh, I want you know this thing, it'll, it'll probably sell, or I want that thing. It's by the pound. They're just, they're just, cr just shipping crate after shipping crate of e-waste and industrial waste, basically. Not industrial waste like you know syringes and things like that, but like, um, yeah, I, I saw I saw a bunch of uh, beds there, like medical equipment beds, um, or what else? Uh, some like I don't know what they what they're called, but uh, like if you're giving an, somebody an IV drip and it goes through a machine that like. Um, administers medicine at just the right dosage into the IV feed. They had some of that equipment there that was uh, that was being, it was all brand new. It hadn't been used before and it was just available. So inside, and they were selling them for like $2 for like the unit. And that unit has f button flexes and um, little motor mechanisms to like just rotate it just the right amount, uh, the right number of steps to dispense a certain milliliter or stuff like just in parts alone, it, it's worth the two bucks. So you'd buy it for a couple things. So, um, I saw this sitting in the back and it didn't, it yeah. didn't have any, uh, labeling on it. It doesn't have any uh, marketing information except NCR and it's some sort of point of sale system where it's got like a, a barcode reader down here and it has, um, what maybe our speakers this kind of looks like transparent to ir maybe well let's take a look uh and then some sort of like um magnetic card reader on the side what else was it? oh that's right and then down here i was lifting it after i just it's got a printer down here what that's super cool you know, a big roll of uh paper probably you know four inches wide or something it probably dispensed something after you negotiated with this thing at a, some either like a company or uh, I don't know, it's got a barcode reader though. Anyways, just in parts alone, it's totally worth what I paid for it. And I thought to myself, worst case is I turn it into like a little MAME cabinet and then have a couple of uh, controller caddies on the side and I could take it into work and let people play like old, uh, arc, you know, play Galaga or something like that, who knows? Uh, maybe maybe print out the the top score for the day or let people sort of have bragging rights and this thing is kind of you just print something out so i'm hoping that i can get this thing to boot up uh maybe do a little bit of archaeology if it's got the original software on it doubt it um a lot of companies are smart enough to go yanking hard drives and or drilling a uh and putting a drill bit through one of them but who knows we might find some stuff or worst case or you know if if there's no if there's no interesting things to find on the hard drive, we might be able to uh, throw in a little SSD, bump up the memory, and get it to boot up. And I'm hoping that things like the barcode scanner, that thing, and the printer are just like hid devices. Or maybe that thing shows up as like a USB printer of some kind. I can just literally directly print to it, and it would kick stuff out. There's, there's no indication that anything on here would be broken. It's just probably just taken out of commission. So let's let's uh, let's take it apart and see what we can find. All right, so I've loosened up some screws back here. Let me see if I can turn it around so you guys can see what I'm dealing with here. Oh, very nice. All right, looks like I might have to take you off the tripod. Let's see, so. All right, there we go. Much better with the flashlight. So we got, we got a power supply. Uh, I don't know if this thing can articulate or not. Uh, maybe once and then it gets and then it gets set again. I don't. I'm not sure. It says it's got a computer in here, but I don't see one. I see a hard drive, uh, like an IDE cable. There we go. So it looks like it's one of those kind of all-in-one units here. Ooh, a parallel port for a printer. You know, you know we're talking modern now. 12 volt USB. <laughs> Okay, 24 volt USB. What was this thing used for? My goodness. Uh, oh, a cash drawer. A little label that says cash drawer. You see, I see that one. There it is. Some regular USB. Some cereal. Oh, dude, cereal. <laughs> this thing might might get turned into a um, 
I'm going to turn this into like a little diagnostic machine for the for the garage in here, man. If I can use it as, as a, uh, a serial computer, meaning like, you know, RS-232 kind of thing. So where, where is that guy? I think it's another, I think there's like, I think there's two serial ports. I think there's two serial ports over here and then like a third one over on that side. So that's got like this rack system here. Let's see. Focus. There we go. There we go. It's kind of cool. Pull that out for some serviceability here. Be swapping some hard drives and stuff. Like so okay, I showed you guys the printing mechanism. I want to get down here. Yeah, let's see. NCR Corporation model seven four zero two K five nine or two. Oh, look at that! Extra paper score. Now we just got to figure out how, <laughs> how does one get the extra paper from down from down yonder. Hmm. Luckily, the it was already unlocked. Not a problem if it wasn't. We can always pick that pick that lock. It's pretty straightforward. I got like three pins in there. All right, I'm gonna poke around this a little bit more with uh, off camera, so you guys don't get super dizzy, and uh, I'll come back and let you know what I find. After a bit of digging around, I discovered that he's kind of popped this up. Of course, it would only go up if you had the key and this door was open. Otherwise, it would jam up on the door so that people can't get in here. And you're in. A little spool of paper. Score. I, was gonna, I thought I was gonna have to source some of this. And, uh, All right, so it's plugged in. There's no, no smoke came out of it, so uh, unless there's a, some sort of switch that detects that it's out in service mode, uh, we should be able to boot it up. Let's take a look. Whoa! <laughs> Speakers up top. Yeah. Ooh, glorious Windows XP. Oh man, holy crap! If this thing, if this thing boots up just into like plain Jane fucking Windows with a start button, oh man, <laughs> oh what a score! Holy crap! I, I'm blown away, man. I really thought I was gonna boot this thing up, but it's just gonna be like the BIOS and everything's blown away and gone. Nothing boots. This is a great place to start from because then you're, 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 you've got drivers going. And to see this screen, that, a lot of things work, man. To hear that boop, so many... Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of stuff working. Okay, great. Point of sale. Sensor point of sale. That's probably like a... Oh, those are drivers, so it's a MSI it's an installer of some kind for some drivers. A little bit of gunk on the screen. I'm not sure if we can wash that off. What does it do? Usually like a long tap or right click or like a double tap. It's not multi-touch, you know. Ooh, here's the question. As nice as this thing looks, depending on where it was, maybe an airport or something like that, or uh, point of sale makes me think that, and it's got a the barcode down here. Whoa! <laughs> Dude, look at that. I was gonna say the barcode down here has like a, um, let's see you guys. See what I see. That looks like a traditional type, you know, and then trying to imply like maybe a barcode for, for a product or something. So, yeah. Oh man. Okay, so the question is, is this resistive touch or capacitive touch? Sorry, I had to turn the microphone around so you guys didn't have to hear as much of the hum from the power supply. Clearly not the, with the power supply making that much noise. Maybe it makes less noise when it's inside the case, but obviously not in like a, a not expected to be used in a really low noise environment, like maybe a hospital or an operating room or something like that. They they would they would have got a nicer power supply that made less noise. Um, but again, we we can I, mean, I can switch that out. I can I can put one of those DC to DC uh, ATX type power supplies and get this thing going uh, silently. That'd be really kick ass. So, uh, how do we tell if this is a, a capacitive touch or a resistive touch? Uh, resistive touch uses uh, X and Y um, coordinates. You're pressing down on, on X and Y um, little filaments in here. And when you press hard enough, it completes the circuit. And then that's where it knows you are. It's like a game of Battleship, you know? So, the way you can tell is if you come in and you just hover over the screen. You don't touch it. Let me give you guys 
So here I am, moving, moving. Yeah, ever so lightly, I can just feel the dancing of touch on the on my on the the, the pad of my finger, and as opposed to having to press and push. So this is a capacitive touch screen. Look at that thing. A little bit of lag, but I'm just gently touching it. That's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be awesome to to use. All right, where do we go? Uh, open up this text file. No, nothing. Start. Computer. No, it's a little funky. Uh, C drive. Program files. Um, there we go. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just switching that because it's easier to, for touching. Uh, let's see. What did I say? Program files. Nothing jump out at jumping out at me aside from like the sun stuff as like super proprietary. Like, <laughs> I keep wanting to like click and drag, like actually move the thing like I'm in iOS, but no. My database, my database is in cyberspace. I wear power ties, I tell power lies, I take power naps, I run victory laps. I read junk mail, I eat junk food, I buy junk bonds, I watch trash boards. I'm tireless and I'm wireless. I'm an alpha male on data blockers. Interactive, I'm hyperactive from time to time. I'm radioactive. I take it slow, I go with I don't know, maybe this door needs to be closed or something, or... Paper jam, a can PC load letter. There's a little switch over here. I was sitting here messing with it. I got it kind of fed through the way I think it's supposed to go. Yeah, I noticed closing the door didn't really seem to defeat that switch, so I just pressed it with my finger and out, out this guy popped, so. Oh, there you go, right? Score! And then it just cuts it off. Look. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> cool. All right, that's. I'm pleased. Pleased as punch. All right, now, the question is, what do I do with the thing? I mean, I have it, right? Is this a uh, computer that lives in the shop and just, you know, does does things I need in here, like maybe play music or uh, <laughs> print things on on very uh, obscure, goofy paper? Mm -hmm. Maybe a MAME cabinet and the high scores get printed out? I don't know. Uh, what's next? Oh, yeah, the barcode scanner. Let's see. All right, after a couple successful s scans of this uh, UPC, now it doesn't want to... Before, the red light was kind of pulse. It would blink on and off. It like, check. Now it's in steady mode. This just needs some programming. Uh, it might be for another video where we dig into seeing what make and model that is. A lot of them, if you guys haven't messed with these types of barcode scanners, some of them in the owner's manual, or the user's manual for it, uh, it actually has barcodes to scan. Like, you take the owner's manual, you go to, like, page 12, and it says, you know, put this thing in uh, carriage return mode and you, you just show it that page and there's a, a fancy barcode on there. It sees it. First you put this in like a program mode. Then you say, okay, now do carriage return or uh, tab after every entry. Like you set it up how, you, how you'd how you like. Uh, and so they can actually be programmed from barcodes. They're, they're, they're pretty pretty versatile that way. Yeah, well, that, that might be, let's, let's, ta let's tackle that for another video. But I mean, it's successfully made with the boops and the beeps, so score. All right, boys and girls, uh, at great risk to me, I'm going to try and uh, swipe both my uh, my debit card and my California driver's license. And the, the challenge here is that one, you guys can see them. <laughs> Two, if it does what I think it's going to do, and that is to just dump the the plain text information that's on here out to a field that would have been in the, in the program where this is just basically a keyboard input. Uh, it is just going to dump that stuff to here. So I'm gonna have to blur this part out here. But if you if you see some 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 action here, that's that's the data going across it. Uh, so let's see what to do first. Let's do the classic credit card. Yep, and as expected, it it prints it just fine. So let's see what's next. How about the uh, the California driver's license? 
<laughs> yep, you'll... <laughs> it's just... Sorry. It's, you'll have to trust me. It's basically just all of my information. <laughs> just uh, street address, uh, full name, date of birth, <laughs> lat long. I mean, like, it's, it's all in there, man. Like, there's, there's not... Nothing's left behind. It's all in plain text. Now, uh, we all know that these... Uh, these magnetic strips are not super secure, or at least um, they, they assume that one would need like you know positive control of the thing to to get it. So um, yeah, so, so so there's that. <laughs> hey, it works. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt, and I'm hanging tough over and out, over and out, over and out.